Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mark Boyle. I'm the Prepper Guy. And recently, I did a podcast and video um, kind of titled Save Our Republic or Saving Our Republic. And I said that I would get back to you all as as things progressed along. Well, it appears that uh, it's it's harder to get a hold of a lot of these people and to to really get the information I want, which is not a big deal because I needed to think about what it is that I wanted also from these people. So rather than go through all that, which I will continue to do, and what I'd like to do is have, you know, these organizations participating and maybe setting up page on their website or whatever to where you and I could go there and find people to contact when we when we plan these operations or little uh, pressure points that we will apply to federal, local, or you know any government agency that we may run across. And in the past, a lot of people have enjoyed some of my videos where I talk about you know, basically giving my finger to the man, whether it's local or state or federal. And I've been meaning to get around to doing that for quite some time, but it's just, it's not that easy to to really do. Um, because I'm not always, you know, kicking the hornet's nest when it comes to these types of issues. Um, if somebody brings something to my attention and says, "Hey, how do I fight this or deal with that?" then I can I can think about it and put something together. So the overall, the overarching master plan is really quite simple. You and I, as Americans, need to uh, start being a little more interactive with uh, some of these situations we face day to day in our our lives when when we come in contact with the enemy which in this case and as far as i'm concerned is is always a government agency whether it's federal state or local city you know planning and zoning board whatever they are really the enemy because they're they're trying to tell you what you can and cannot do whether it has to do with your private property or your free speech, any of these issues, they are now stepping in and saying, well, wait a tick, you can't uh, do that. And your first reaction should be like mine. It's like, hey, fuck you. But the old quote is, obey little and resist much. And I don't remember who did that or said that, but we need to take that, um, that mindset also and say no i i'm gonna not obey that and i am gonna resist that well that's where we get into trouble see because then along comes you know the thin blue line if you're dealing with a city bureaucrat over zoning issues and they just write you a ticket because it happens to be thursday at two o'clock and you're chewing gum they can write you a ticket pretty much for anything disorderly conduct uh, disturbing the peace, pissing off a planning and zoning dude or dudette. And 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 that's where we, we have to just stand, say no. I'm sorry, but flat out no. And now you're dealing with a, an officer of the law who carries a gun and a badge, so you should really watch your mouth or you might end up getting shot for being a dick. Not saying that your actions were dickish, but you are going to get in trouble depending on the officer, the mood. Did he get laid in the morning or did she get what she wanted in the morning? I don't know. So how do we approach these types of situations day to day? and deal with it in a way that has a better long-term effect than you just biting the bullet and paying, you know, planning and zoning for a permit and inspections and all that happy shit, which you should not have to do. Or do you fight it 
for your neighbor for next month when he wants to collect rainwater and you sidestep that issue because you knew somebody or you just paid it and, and you got it passed. What about the next person? You know, would you, would you walk across the rickety bridge where, you know, you just saw it almost break when you were on it and not tell the next person or not try to mend it for the future generations that may cross that bridge and go, hey, why didn't those jackasses, you know, five years ago fix this? Well, that's, that's really a good question. How do we fix this? So the, the overarching plan is to set something in motion with like Oath Keepers and the three percenters and the sheriff's, you know, associations and stuff, especially the CSPOA, which is more constitutional in nature. Because if you just talk to the sheriff's association, you know, 50, 60 percent of them are dicks and don't understand what their oath of office is or how to apply it. So that was the, that was the original concept. And, and I'm not saying that it's gone away. It's just, I, I think it needs refinement before I approach some of these people and talk to them. Now I'm going to tag them in this video, like Sheriff Mack and the Oath Keepers and the Three Percenters and many of the Three Percenters I know from Facebook and say, hey, we need to get a plan. And I just happen to have that plan. So let's talk about it. So how would this work? So I guess the best way to, to, to present this is to just bring, a, bring across a, maybe a point or an example. And I've talked about you know the murder of Lavoie Finnegan. And now it seems like the state of Oregon's trying to uh, um, have a special election to get rid of that dumb bitch, Kate Brown, who was around when Lavoie was murdered and she called a lot of the shots. What would you do in that situation when everything is going south? Well, once things start going south, there's not much you can do but other than capitulate and walk away with your life. Or maybe, just maybe, start with a better plan. So um, that one was kind of spontaneous, just like the Bundy Ranch situation was kind of spontaneous. Um, in one, the outcome was favorable with the Bundys, and in the other, it was not. So if you were planning some kind of thing, like what happened in Oregon that Lavoie Finnegan was the spokesman for and got himself shot, you might want to, before you just jump in with both feet and then realize that you're going into hypothermic shock because it's so damn cold because you didn't even stick your little toe in the water. You you might, and I, I don't mean that to disrespect Lavoie or the Hammonds for what happened. I'm just saying, many times we go rushing headlong and bullheaded into a situation that is noble and just, but without having your ducks in a row, you could get in trouble get hurt, get arrested like many of the Hammonds and the protesters did. And you don't want that to happen. So I would say the the first example would be to uh, maybe think about the, the overall goal of this protest, this uprising, as we can call it. So it's going to happen in maybe a wilderness area, a wildlife refuge, public land, or that should be public land, but it's now forest service or some stupid shit. So you don't just get all your friends together and go protest. You, you look at the lay of the land, and I'm not talking about a topographical map of where you're going to protest. What is the media in your area, in that area, we're just gonna say it's your area and you have a bug up your butt about this, you know, federal land being seized and turning it into a, 
a fish hatchery when that used to be something else that you enjoyed. So what is the media's take, your local media's take on this? Are they all for it because they're, you know, big government and yeah, yeah, take all their land? Or can you find a, a local paper, a local radio station, a local news station that believes that this is wrong? Maybe you know someone that works there, even if it's just a DJ at a radio station or you know, a reporter at the newspaper or something. So you go talk to them and go, hey, what is the, the, the lay of this land here? This is a problem, and I've heard you speak about it, and it seems like the, the newspaper or the radio station or the television station is, you know, opposed to this land grab by the federal government. Figure it out. Take some notes. Write it down. And then find out, is the local sheriff a jackass? Is he or she a constitutional Oath Keeper? Now, I'm not saying that they're a member of the Oath Keepers. I'm saying a constitutional Oath Keeper. So you go talk to the sheriff, maybe. Make an appointment. Don't be rude. And, and ask if you can meet with him for 20, 30 minutes of your time. Prepare an elevator pitch that's, you know, 30, 60 seconds just to kind of give them an outline of what you want to do and say, you know, here's what I'm thinking what I'd like to do. I, I would like to get some people there to protest. It's a peaceful protest. But what we're, what we're really looking for is a, an excuse for the feds to overreact like they always do. So I need to know that you're going to have my back. If the feds show up, do you understand that you have the constitutional authority to, to send them away, to make them stand down? So let's say that he or she does understand that because they are a member of the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peacekeepers Association with Sheriff Mack. And they're oath keepers because they understand their oath. And they go, well, yeah, no, we think that the federal government is you know, taking way too much land in this state. By golly, my great-grandfather was a rancher here. I'm, I'm with you. You know, what are you planning on doing? You know, he's going to have some reservations because if you're planning on being a jackass, he's not going to sign off on this. So you just go, well, no, here's, you know, I, I, I'm thinking of something and I just wanted to make sure that I would have your support, not, you know, I don't want you to bring your guns to bear. I just want to know that my position is similar to your position on this issue. So he might say, yeah, let's just assume that he's a, a constitutional sheriff. And he goes, yeah, that doesn't sound too bad. You're not trying to burn down the White House here. You're just, you know, going to have a peaceful protest. You go, okay, well, you know, I've talked to the couple of the local stations here and, and I got some friends that are, you know, really popular bloggers that a lot of people in this area, you know, read their blogs and watch their videos. And it's media. And I think if we can bring that much media to bear, and, and I know that you will at least, you know, have my sex if this goes south. You know, I'm just getting my ducks in a row here. So you shake his hand and you leave her hand. Then you go on to the next part of it. So you need to have media and you're going to need to have law enforcement. I'm not talking about a bunch of stupid cops. I'm talking about the sheriff who is the chief law enforcement officer in your county. The Supreme Court has ruled that. So you're safe there. So then you might want to talk to some three percenter groups in the area and go, Here's what we're planning on doing, and I've talked to the media, and we found good media that's not a bunch of liberal jerk-offs. I've talked to the sheriff, and he or she has said that, you know, they think this is a good idea, and they're willing to tell any federal agents to stand down if it comes to that. Now what we want to do is we want people. We want bodies, you know, that also feel this, this is an atrocity. You know, they're still in 70, 80% of our land. 
and and with that goes the funds that are linked to that land, like mining claims, oil leases, logging leases. You know, the, the BLM is now taking that money from our county and and siphoning it off to the feds. And, and now we couldn't even build, you know, that sports complex for the, the high school football team because the county has no money because the feds have taken all that. You know, normally, you know, a company that is doing oil exploration or logging, you know, these big contracts by Weyerhaeuser and, and uh, power companies and stuff, you you fall under their tax basin. So if they're building a power plant, then they will fund those projects like, you know, sports complex. But if, if they're if they're dealing with the BLM, then that money all goes to, you know, off to La La Land. And then the government skims off their 95% and sends you back, you know, pocket change to run your county. So we need uh, bodies that are not a bunch of assholes. I don't want a bunch of, you know, armed militia, young looking bucks with, you know, body armor and tactical vests. Don't want that. I want, you know, the average, you know, Joe American. You know, people that live here and understand the issues and are willing to take a stand dressed in their blue jeans and their work clothes and and to say, hey, what the hell? So you put that together. Now you've got your your main components, you know, the 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 battle plan. You know, you got shit going on. My back's still sore from hurting it the other day. I just did a podcast on back pain and maybe how you can take care of it if you suffer from that. Um, so you got your ducks in a row now. Um, now all you got to do is, is, is plan this thing. Go, well, okay, we're going to, we're going to have it on April 10th, whatever, July 22nd, cause that's my birthday. Um, and, and then you go, we're, we're going to do it at a time when we know that, you know, fishing game or whoever they are, are just about ready to go on vacation. And we're going to come marching in and we're going to have a big protest, a well-organized, hey, you're taking our land and this is private property and you're screwing with our ranchers, with our loggers, whatever your goal is. And I would would, uh, suggest that you have a good goal and a good reason you know, other than they're stealing your land, which is good enough. But when they go, what's this all about? You need to have something that is a, is a trigger word for them. They're, whoa, wait a minute. You can't do that. See, doesn't I don't know what it is. You know, you could be pissed off because the city has an oppressive leash law. So you go, we're going to, you know, we're going to fight this to, and get rid of the, this leash law. And then the dog catchers can go, whoa, wait a minute. You don't understand what you're talking about. It's like, good. I got your attention. So then you have your protest. You have your media show up that's all favorable. And if the feds show up, which they usually do, then the sheriff steps in and goes, hey, this is a peaceful protest. It's in my county. You have no authority here. You think you're a bunch of, you know, park rangers with badges and guns, but you have no authority here. This is my jurisdiction. You guys need to stand down. And they have to stand down. Trust me. Otherwise, they're getting into a gun battle, not with the three percenters and a bunch of young bucks, you know, toting AR-15s. They're going to get into a gun battle with the sheriff's department, which is a no-win situation no matter what happens. So you, you pull this off, and with the media comes validation for the point you're going to win it and all of a sudden now the conversation starts going hey who are these yahoos in xyz county that just asked the park rangers to disband this uh, project they were working on hmm sounds like a bunch of y'all qaeda it's like no uh, they had the support of the sheriff the governor everyone on their side now that's great. You know, you could do this on little, little things like uh, 
planning and zoning, you know, I'm debating kicking the hornet's nest or just continue to fly under the radar to, to build onto my house. But um, knowing how they operate, I'm sure someone's going to get pissed and I'm going to have to get pissed right back at them. So you could do it on small ones, but the big plan, my big plan is you take a group like Oath Keepers. They have a map, I'm pretty sure, or they can buy one of all the counties in America, 3,000 plus. And then they go, okay, let's sit down with the, uh, the Oath Keepers, the uh, three percenters, uh, sheriffs, and let's put a, a little green pin in all the counties, because green means go, all the counties that have constitutional sheriffs and have an issue with their land being stolen. Let's just say that's the issue. And then now we're going to contact all the three percenter groups and the Oath Keepers in those areas, and we're going to plan a series of protests all across, you know, these 15 counties, all of them on July 22nd, because that's my birthday. So then all of a sudden, you know, maybe it might take a year planning, but on that day, without any chatter on the internet, boom, there's like 15 protests all across America. Maybe even just the Southwest where the land's being stolen so much faster than most places. Now the FBI is going to want to step in. They're going, oh, wait a minute. You're, you're, you're asking for our land back. It's like, no, excuse me, we're asking for our land back, not yours. It never was yours. You have no claim to it. Read the Constitution, dumbass. So they can't, they can't show up in overwhelming force like they did with, uh, at the Hammonds and, and the Wildlife Refuge and you know, where they had the, the ability to just screw everything up and kill Lavoie Finnegan. See, they, they don't have that much manpower now because there's 15 of them. That's a, that's a lot of logistics. And if you spring it on them, they're caught off guard. So they're going to let this one roll under the table. They're just going, oh, you know what, give them what they want. But see, as they're surrendering and giving us what we want, we're chipping away at their rights to steal our land. Each, each one of those protests has an underlying agenda to stop some government overreach. So even though they back down because they can't just fight it, you still get a victory. It's not like, you know, you had a great protest and everyone ate hot dogs and hamburgers. Yeah, that was great. No one got killed. That's even greater. But what you did through all the, the subterfuge and the smoke and the mirrors and the confusion and catching them off guard is you won key components of the battle. So you won these battles. You didn't win the war, but you won 15 battles. Maybe you only win 10. Maybe some of the other ones fall apart and collapse because the sheriff is a jackass and he's like, oh, you know, I didn't think it was going to be like this. We're going to go home and set this out because... We're just, you know, we'd rather hide under our desk than be part of this. You guys are talking anarchy. So let's say 10 of them. Well, now you have 10 strong, solid victories. And then with all of the groups that you've pulled in, you get a lot of SEO traction, I guess, because most of it's going to happen on the Internet. It's the way it works these days. Everyone's cross-sharing and linking. And all of a sudden, there's a, there's a vibe out there. It's like, hey, did you hear that that fish hatchery up there in Oregon was actually shut down and they had to abandon it? And, uh, or that wildlife refuge. They had to abandon that property and give it back to the state. Wow, I didn't know that. Did you know that this thing over here got shut down or got, you know, had a court order that they had to cease and desist because 
they didn't have the right to do that. Did you hear that your neighbor, Bob, actually was able to catch rainwater in Colorado because of this protest? And now the city or the state has to rethink their rainwater catchment because they made a good case. They won it. They got the attention of the media. And now people are going, hey, wait a minute. This is our rainwater, you dick. It fell on my house. I will do what I want with it. If it's yours, then pay me rent for all that water landing on my house and pay for a new roof. That's your damage, not mine. So you start winning these. Small and subtle, but you start winning them on small scales, on big scales. Now, if you could take this locally, you know, in a community, say a county, it's where you still talk to the sheriff, you still talk to the media, you still get some groups together, and you say, you know what, um, we need to call attention to some of these problems that are going on in the county. How can we do that? And, and, and you always got to keep it square with the sheriff because you don't want to be violating the law, you know, get in your way because you're a spoiled little brat. But you want to do it in a way to where you're making positive change. You know, it, as mindless as what most of what Obama said, we are the change we've been waiting for is actually a pretty good statement. I mean, it's no dumber than life is like a box of chocolates or stupid is as stupid does. We are the change we are all hoping for. But if we don't go out and do something about it, that change will never transpire. So we have to take it in smaller bites. It's like someone told me one time, how do you eat an elephant? And the federal government is a pretty damn big elephant. How do you eat that? One bite at a time. The other cliche is, a journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. We're smarter than this. Why are we being led around by the nose rings, by the media and the federal government that is way, way overreaching? And, and they're, they're usurping more and more of our liberty and our authority. They're rewriting what authority they have by these unconstitutional acts that go unnoticed and therefore they become precedent. And now all of a sudden you think that the Parks and Recreation actually have fucking authority in your state. They don't. They get the authority because the sheriffs aren't understanding their oaths and are allowing them to carry badges and guns. There is one county somewhere, California or Oregon, that the sheriff just marched into the, the, the park ranger's office and said, hey, you guys, I'll give me your badges and your guns. You can no longer enforce law in my county. And over all the hoopla and the whining and crying, um, they gave back the gap badges and the guns because the sheriff is the, is the checking account that those checks are being written on. They write a ticket or they flash that badge. It is only by virtue of the sheriff that they are allowed to even do that. And any authority they get is directly from him. And all of his authority is directly from you. So we must be that change that we need. We need to initiate these changes and move forward. Now I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, make a plea here. You know, you can contact me at Mark at prepperguy.com and you can leave a, a comment which is less noticeable um, on YouTube. But uh, I get my emails and if you just put in this subject, save our republic, I'll know it's, you know, because I get just like everyone else, hundreds of of emails from all kinds of people sounding like the, hey, Mark, how you doing? And then you click on it. It's like 
do you got a limp noodle? You know, it's like, who asked for this shit? So just subject, save our republic. And uh, let me know if you have any ideas. You know, I think we need a list of positive, smaller radio stations. And there's, uh, you know, uh, one in Dalton, Utah, I know of, and I do my radio show for once a week. Um, KYAH, Dalton, Utah. Michael, the, the manager there, I think he owns it. Um, he's a good guy. He posts a lot of, you know, content besides his radio show on, you know, things that we're concerned about. So we need a list of radio stations across the entire United States. Newspapers, smaller newspapers, maybe uh, local magazines that have an editorial board that aren't whacked that would go, hey, you guys do something like this and I will write, write favorable articles on you. Because see what happened in, in, in Oregon was the city, the people, seemed to get upset because there were all these protesters. Now, that's only a perceived thing. You know, they, they were upset because they were told to be upset because the sheriff was such a jackass and the governor and the mayor and the judge made it seem like this was a bad thing. So pay no attention to the fact that every one of your hotel rooms is rented and every one of your restaurants is making money and every one of your waiters and waiter, waitresses is getting tips and making good money. We're all pissed because it's an inconvenience. And so the, the optics of it slid to the wrong side and it looked bad. You need that. You need to start with your optics and how's this going to look? Can I get the whole community behind this? You know, well, what's in it for us? Well, I can guarantee you that when we do this, I'm going to be bringing in a thousand people and they're all going to be renting hotel rooms and uh, you will have zero vacancies. Is that good enough for you? Um, your little restaurant that you own is going to be packed, slammed. And I'm going to give you enough notice ahead of time of actually how many people we're projecting are going to be here. And since you're one of four restaurants in the town, you will know a pretty good headcount so you're not caught with your pants down and run out of food. Is that good for you? Hey, media and hey, mayor, look at all the publicity you're going to get favorable to you standing behind this issue because everybody in town thinks you're an ass and want to unelect you. But hey, you take a stand for a change. They might rethink their opinion of you. Hey, sheriff, would you like to get reelected? Got an election coming up next year, next week, tomorrow, whatever. How would you like to look favorable? Like somebody that actually understands the law and is willing to protect his or her constituents' rights. Not to just write tickets, but to understand your rights and is willing to go to bat for your right to catch rainwater. Your right to build onto private property without having to kiss the ring of the local government, mainly planning and zoning. Think that'll help your election campaign? It's all free. I mean, fuck, you don't even, won't even cost you a dime. Just show up. Say something cool every once in a while and you're reelected. So we need media, small, medium, large, if you can find it. Um, can't trust Fox News because they're half ass in the bag too. You need sheriffs, law enforcement people. Chief law enforcement, CLEO as they call them, which are sheriffs. They are the chief law enforcement officers in a county. You need them, you need a list of them, the ones that are good and the ones that are useless and should be unelected. And you could fire this off in the other direction and go, here's some counties that are just shit. You're sheriffs. So as we're marketing this other protest that's doing so good for this county. We're going to be showing that in the other county 
And maybe people will look at their sheriff and go, you know, Bob, you're really a fuck up. We're getting rid of you. Why don't you be like him over there? You know, that dude, he's cool. You're an idiot. So you get the media and you get the the sheriffs and law enforcement and mayors and, you know, the authority going around. Might even get the mayor, if he's on board, to lighten up with the police and tell the police, hey, you know, we're going to be inundated here with press and all this crap. Um, don't just go out writing tickets. You know, talk to people, be respectful and go, hey, could you please not park here? It's a fire zone. You know, this is not a cash grab. I mean, show the media that we're not about that, that we just want safety. So, you know, ask people to be polite, you know, write tickets when necessary, but hey, use your fucking head. So everything starts swinging that way. That's what we need. Not saying it'll happen overnight, but that's what we need. And then we need oath keepers, three percenters, you know, law enforcement associations and groups that are on the right page, like the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peacekeepers Association, Sheriff Mac. That's what we need. So as I originally started to, you know, call out for emails and comments, um, think about it. You know, is there somebody you know or you yourself or a family member that's in law enforcement or works in any of these agencies or understands marketing um, the legal system and how to chip away at some of these oppressive regulations and how maybe a protest just at the right place is the right leverage point to tip it in our favor, we the people? Let me know. So I'm going to start filling in my database and people in contact. So, you know, hopefully as time goes on, if you tell me, hey, I've got an idea, you know, I've run into this blockade here of bureaucracy and red tape, all I'm trying to do is, you know, catch rainwater on my property. I live in this county. Is there anyone nearby that can help me? Once we get it set up, see, now we have a support system to where you can call somebody. And they might say, you know what, in your county in Colorado, um, we don't know anybody, but you know what, um, here's some people that were really successful with this over in this state. And here's how they started chipping away at it. See, because you have the, the Tenth Amendment Center that really works on a lot of nullification bills. And maybe sometimes you need a law that is passed, a nullification law that says the federal government cannot call state officials into action to stop rainwater collection. They, they can't do that either. I right? didn't just make that shut up. So talk to this group. Maybe they'll have a, you know, some plans of how they worked with it and how they worked with the the three percenters and how they worked with, you know, the Tenth Amendment Center or they didn't even know that this law was going through the state capitol by the, the Tenth Amendment Center that, you know, we got on board and it passed quicker. And now the, the state cannot come along and tell you, you can't catch rainwater because it's against some federal EPA thing. So that's, that's my overall big plan. I wasn't trying to keep it all secret. I was just trying to get it, you know, locked in a little bit better. And I'm a scatterbrain, so I need to really rake shit up into neat little piles before they make sense. So now it's time to pick those piles up and do something with it. So that is the Save Our Republic plan of action. S-O-R-P-O-A, plan of action, whatever. It's Save Our Republic. That's the working title for now. And, uh, and what I want to do with it, and if you think you could help, that would be great. Um, I have no damn money, so this is not a raise money organization. This is an educational organization. If we can get people to voluntarily help save our republic, then that's better. 
Because if you become an organization that raises money, then you need to have a 501c3. The minute you do that, you can't do a lot of things talking about politics. So it'll never be that. It'll always be just getting our shit together and fixing problems. And there's a lot that need fixed. So I wanted to lay that out for you. Let me know what you think. Um, you know, definitely, you know, subscribe. Click that little bell. Bling. Uh, thumbs up if you liked it. And uh, definitely send me a comment if you, if you think this is maybe a glimmer of hope in a very dark world. And I'd appreciate it. And uh, maybe we can do something together as Americans to become, as Obama said, the change we have been waiting for. So until we meet again, save our republic. Help us all save our republic, I guess. I haven't even found a really cool way to wrap shit up yet. I am that shallow. Take care.